Hey guys, welcome back. In the past couple of days, I've been working on this parallax animation because I truly believe these types of animations are great. Basically, they're versatile. You can use them for a corporate project or a more artistic one, and they work in mobile. In the end, I believe they're an essential tool for any creative developer. So today we're taking a look at this animation. I'll make this using Next.js, Framer Motion, and the Lenis Scroll. All right, so here I have a very basic Next.js project. I have a bunch of images here inside of an array that corresponds to all of the images inside of the public folder here. And I'm gonna use that to create the gallery. And so the first thing I want to do here is create like the basic HTML and CSS layout. So for the basic layout, I start by creating an inner component called column that takes an array of images as parameters. And that column then returns the images with a container and a next image. And then I simply copy paste that column inside of a gallery div inside of the page.js component. And we should have something like this, a very basic layout. I have four columns here with three images inside each one of them. And all of that is inside of the gallery. And with that, we can start working on the styling. I'm gonna go real quick over this to show you guys how we can create like a nice layout. So what we have here is a gallery. Inside of the gallery, we have a bunch of column. Inside of the column, we have a bunch of image container that contains images. So the first thing we can do is give a height of like 175 viewport height to the gallery. And we can also give it a certain background color. And then to position the column, I'm gonna put it in display flex, flex direction column with like a gap of two viewport width. And I'm also gonna give it a padding of two viewport width. And for the box sizing, I'm gonna do border box. And the column will have a width of 25%. So we have four columns. So 25% each, a height of 100%, also a display flex, a flex direction column, and the gallery here, the flex direction should be row, not column. And we're still not seeing any changes here. That's because the next image is taking the full height and the full width until we give its container a position relative. So I'm gonna go in the image container here and give it a width of 100%, height of 100%, and position relative. And the first thing I'm seeing here is in the column, I'm gonna add some gap of two viewport width as well. And then here, the images are kind of getting like crammed up here. So what I can do is do object fit, cover and now that makes more sense and I'll also give it a min width of like 250 so it doesn't get like too skinny and lastly I see some margin here I think it's on the body so I'm just gonna go in the globals here and do body margin zero pixels so that looks pretty good last thing here I'm gonna do a border radius of one viewport width with an overflow hidden on the image container and now we have like this nice rounded look and i'm pretty good with that now we have a gallery and we can start animating this using frame motion so we're going to use two hooks from frame motion to create the parallax effect one of them is the use transform and we're also going to use the use scroll and i'll specify that we are on the client here to start using those hooks so the first thing i want to do here is track the scroll so what we can do is create a reference for the main container so i'm going to use the use ref hook from react and i'm going to give that container here to the gallery and that's basically the section where i want to track the scroll and then I can use the use scroll hook from frame motion and extract the scroll Y progress, which is equal to the use scroll. And I can specify a target here and then I'm gonna give the container. If I don't specify a target like this, the use scroll hook will track the progress of the scroll for the entire document. And I don't want that. I only want to track inside of the gallery. So I specify a container for that. And then I'll also specify an offset. And to understand that a bit better, I'm gonna add two div here that I'm gonna call spacer. So I have one on top and one at the bottom of the gallery. And I just give them a height of 100 viewport height in the styling. And with that, we have a bit of wiggle room to work on the animation. Now the offset is basically when when I want to start and when I want to stop tracking the scroll. So here, I basically want to start my animation when the container here enters the view. So it's at the top of the container and at the bottom of the window. So I can do the start of the container and the end of the window. And then when do I want it to stop tracking? I want to stop tracking here at the end of the container here. So it's at the end of the container and the top of the window. So I do end of the container and top of the window like this. And here I'm just logging the progress of the scroll to show you guys what we have. And when the gallery enters the view, it starts at zero and then it's gonna go up to one at the end here. So now we have a value between zero and one inside of the offset that we specified. And so after that, we're gonna use the use transform hook to transform that progress of the scroll into a Y value that we'll use for the parallax. So I could have here a Y value that would be equal to the use transform of the scroll Y progress. And we want to transform the values, right? We said it's between zero and one, the, the value of the scroll progress. We want to transform those values into a value that would range between like zero and 1000. And then I'll take that Y value and I'll give it to the column here, to the first column to show you guys what it looks like. And then I add a second 
parameter to the column, I give a default value of zero. And here I import the motion from firmer motion. And I just put the motion here in front of the column. And then I can add the styling here and specify the Y that I gave to the first column. And if you try this, we can see that we have a column that's moving on scroll. And we could increment that value to maybe 2000 just to show you guys. And here the parallax is even stronger, right? And here it's also going outside of the bounds of the gallery. So I'm just gonna do an overflow hidden here. And now this makes a lot more sense. But now this animation is, is not smooth. So what we can do is add a smooth scroll. And for that, we're gonna use the Linus scroll library. So I'm gonna take a look at the documentation here. And the first thing we need to do is install the library. So here I'm installing the library. And then I'll take the import here, paste it. And I'm also gonna copy the basic setup. And obviously I can just paste it here. I'm gonna paste it inside of a use effect hook so that this piece of code only runs when the component mounts. And then I can remove this event here. I don't need it. And now we have a nice smooth scroll and our animation is not smooth. So we can do this very easily. Thank you, Linus Scroll. So yeah, that's basically the concept here. Now we created a Y value for the first column. And now what we want to do is create a bunch of different Y values. So four different Y values for the four different columns. And we want to find like the right values to create a nice parallax effect. But I would also like to have this animation be responsive. And so instead of having absolute values here for the translate on the Y axis, instead of that, I want to use like the height of the window. And I cannot do like the window dot inner height like this because the window does not exist at first when we use next just since it's server side so. so what i have to do here is create a hook i'm going to create a use dimension hook and from there we can extract the width and the height of the window so here i'm creating the use dimension hook it contains a state with the dimension of the window and when the client mounts i can update those dimensions and i'll also add an event listener when we resize the window i'll also update those dimensions and then i can simply return those dimensions and here i can extract the height of the window from the use dimension hook and then instead of having an absolute value here i can use the height and like multiply it by two and we have something that looks like this but of course here it's a bit weird because there's like a huge blank space at first so it doesn't look too good so I'm just gonna go in the CSS here and I'm gonna use the solo selector here of nth of type I'll specify the first one and I'll do a top minus 45% and I'll also add a position relative to the column so I can actually use that top value. And if you try this, it makes a lot more sense. Now there's no like weird blank space and there's no like blank space at the bottom too. So this looks really good. And now I simply need to find the right values for the three other columns. I'm going to do both direction and different speeds. So here I'm just copy pasting the values from the use transform. I'm creating three other ones with different values. And then I go in the CSS and I adjust the top value. And we can take a look at the final result here. We have this nice parallax. And so depending on the multiplier here, it goes at a certain speed and at a certain direction. And since we use the height of the window, I can actually put my window bigger and it also works and it retains like the same speed for different window dimension. And so yeah, that's the final result. Really nice animation. Love parallax animations on website. I think they're great. So if you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.